Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Zulfa Ibrahim Abdurrahman. And my report is about the artisan and the guild. I am the first reporter from Group 5. Museums are packed with numer numerous artifacts and interesting objects from all over the world that have survived centuries for us all to see. Magnificent structures that are often appreciated not only for their historical significance but more so for their aesthetic characteristics that render them unique. Become tourist destination for those who wish to explore and see the remarkable face, interior, and even the minutes of details up close. Consider the Gothic cathedrals and other megastructures that were built all over Europe during Middle Ages. Craftsmen and builders in the past did not have sophisticated terminology and principle that architects and engineers abide by today. Yet, they fulfill overlapping roles such as the draftsman, architect, engineer, and even as the builder. So, this is the picture of the Cologne Cathedral in Germany. And this is the picture of the details of the stained glass windows of Cologne Cathedral. These guilds were prevalent during the Middle Ages, particularly during the 13th to 15th century, where towns had formalized groups of artisans or craftsmen who took on particular specialization or trade. Shoemakers, textile and glass workers, carpenters, carvers, masons, armorers, and weapon makers, among others. So, guilds were a type of social fellowship and association structured with rules, customs, rights, and responsibilities. A master artisan or craftsman would then be open to hiring apprentices who would be under this tutelage and instruction. In these guilds, artistry and technology flourish under one roof. In the context of the cathedral construction site, the master mason oversaw the work by numerous men of varying artistic proclivities and skills, from the smiths, metal work, carpenters, carriers, and glaziers, stained glass artists, among others. In this visual arts, an example of an artist strongly influenced by this was Albrecht Dürer, born in 1471. His father was goldsmith. This is why he also apprenticed as such. Later on, he shifted to the visual arts. During that time, it was customary to travel after completing an apprenticeship to gather more experience and knowledge elsewhere. His life was ripe with travels, fame, and fortune. One of the biggest credits to his practice was his dedication and interest in scholarship with his attendance to a close friend's meetings of artists and scholars. Although the timeline is a bit skew, the culture of artisans became prevalent in the Philippines as well, particularly during the Spanish colonial period. Project Kisame is a collective endeavor among enthusiasts and advocates who aim to promote this art from do through documentation, engagement, and appreciation of surviving ceiling paintings in more than 60 churches in the Philippines. Technology and heritage conservation occupy a substantial part of this project. One example of, of Spanish architecture that has been documented in the Church of the Most Holy Trinity in Loay, Bohol, built in 1882. It became a national historical landmark. It was therefore unfortunate that this church was one of those heavily damaged during the devastating earthquake that rattled Bohol in 2013. This is the picture of the Most Holy Trinity in Loay, Bohol. And that's all. Thank you.